Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Dorsey, and I'm with Infinite Scholars Program. Infinite Scholars does one thing, and we do one thing well. We help send high school students to college. Now, we do this with our network of partners of over 400 universities um, and colleges that are partnered with us on this initiative. One of the main things that we do, however, is that we facilitate scholarship fairs. We do the scholarship fairs in 27 cities across the country. When we post a scholarship fair, when we facilitate a scholarship fair, we have between 50 and 100 of our premier partners that are there at the scholarship fairs providing students and their parents information. One of the premier partners that have been with Infinite Scholars for a long while is Tuskegee University. So let me tell you a little bit about Tuskegee before we bring them on to give you all the details that you need to know. Tuskegee University is a private, historically black university in Tuskegee, Alabama. The university was home to scientist George Washington Carver and to the World War II's Tuskegee Airmen. Tuskegee's university offers 40 bachelor's degree programs, 17 master's degree programs, a five-year accredited professional degree program in architecture, four doctoral degree programs, and the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. University is home to nearly 3,000 students from the U.S. and 30 foreign countries. Today, to give us more detailed information on Tuskegee and an update to probably what I just listed out there is Raven Lee. Raven is a Leeds Admissions Counselor at the University. Raven, thank you so much for being here with us today and providing us information on Tuskegee. No, thank you for having us. So I'm just going to get started. Well, first, my name is Raven Lee. I'm an admissions counselor at Tuskegee University. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the PowerPoint. So hi, my name is Raven Lee. I'm an admissions counselor from Tuskegee University. Um, and today I just want to share um, some information about the university with you all. So Tuskegee University, well, Tuskegee University is located in Tuskegee, Alabama. It's about 40 minutes from Montgomery, Alabama, and 20 minutes from Auburn, Alabama. Um, it's also about two hours from Atlanta. Um, just some quick facts about Tuskegee University. Our student to teacher ratio is 13 to 1. It gives our students a little one-on-one um, -on -one attention with our teachers and our faculty and our professors. Um, we believe that our students are not just a number at Tuskegee University. We like to get to know all of our students and get to know them as individuals. We currently have about 3,000 students that attend Tuskegee University, where our colors are crimson and old gold. Tuskegee University is also ranked number eight as one of the best HBCUs. All right, so um, next I'm gonna just show you some undergraduate programs with the undergraduate programs that we offer. We have seven different colleges and schools. This is our College of Arts and Science and these are the different majors um, that we offer in the college. Next is our College of Agriculture, Environmental and Nutrition Science. And these are just some other um, majors that we offer for within the college. And I would like to point out that we do offer um, veterinary science and animal science. Um, Tuskegee University, actually we graduate 75% of African-American vets in the United States and about 90% um, of foreign vets in the United States. We have an entire farm on campus and also the vet clinic. So it's just a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, um, just a lot of hands-on experience. Next, we have our School of Nursing, Allied Health. Nursing is one of our schools where it's a little more competitive um, than our other colleges. And then I'll get more into the requirements after I show you all of our majors. Our College of Engineering. This is one of our colleges where it's 100% employment. Um, and our internships are pretty much mandatory. I know mandatory kind of scare you all, but you definitely want to work while you're in school. Um, Booger T. Washington, as we know, Booger T. Washington founded Tuskegee University. 
but we still hold on to the philosophy where you have to educate the entire person. So we don't want you just in the classroom. We want you to actually work while you're in school. Our College of Business and Information Science, and these are our different majors. Our School of Education is um, another school where it's a little more competitive versus our other colleges. Our School of Architecture and Construction Science. Now we can get into the admissions requirements. So um, our general admission requirements are the general requirements that we have from our students is around a 3.0 GPA, 1,000 on the SAT and 21 on the ACT. Um, and that's just the um, our prefer preferred requirements. With our colleges, most of them want you to have a 2.8 GPA and an 18 going straight into the college, with the exception of our occupational therapy program. That's a five-year program. Um, at the end of the fifth year, you graduate with your master's degree. Our nursing program and our school of education, those programs want you to have a 3.1 GPA and a 21 to go straight into the program from high school. Cost of attendance. So this is just our fee schedule for um, 2021. As you can see, um, we have our tuition along with our room and board and other fees included. Tuskegee University is a private university, um, like mentioned before. So that means that we have no in-state or out-of-state tuition. Everyone pays the same thing across the board. Now to get into the scholarships, because we're, we're all looking for the scholarships. That's the goal, is to get as much money as you can before coming to school. So we have um, five different scholarships that we offer our students. Um, if you're in-state, then you will qualify for the Alabama Incentive Grant. But if not, then um, there's only four scholarships, starting with the Distinguished Presidential. That's our full ride scholarship. So with this scholarship, you have to have a 3.7 GPA. You can see um, the SAT ranges and the ACT ranges for the scholarship. In order to renew this scholarship every year, you're going to see the requirements um, in this column. Next is our um, University Merit. That scholarship just covers full tuition and books, so you still are responsible for your room and board. Um, and the same thing with this scholarship. As long as you meet the GPA requirements, and you have the ACT and SAT requirements, then we'll start considering you for the scholarship. So you don't have to do a scholarship application or anything extra right now. Just make sure you meet the requirements. Our next scholarship is our Achievement Scholarship. This is a $10,000 scholarship and is renewable with a 3.0 GPA and at least 30 credit hours at the end of each year. If you're um, in state in Alabama at a 2.8, you will be able to receive a $5,000 scholarship plus housing along with your um, test um, requirements, testing requirements. And then for our Alabama, um, for our Tuskegee University grant, you have to have a 3.1 GPA, GPA along with our SAT and ACT requirements, and that's an $8,000 scholarship. And this is also listed on our website. So be sure to take the time to go through our website and look at the scholarships just to see where um, you will fall. Athletics. So these are our sports teams at the university um, for our women and our men. Um, it's important to note that if you are trying to come on an athletic scholarship, be sure that you submit an application first. Make sure that you speak with admissions, you make sure that you accept it, and then you speak with your coaches to try to secure those additional, additional funding. Um, we don't stack scholarships within admissions, but we'll stack them across the university. So if you receive an athletic scholarship along with a departmental scholarship and an admission scholarship, you'll be able to keep all scholarships. Also be sure to take advantage of applying for outside scholarships. We don't have a lot of students who take advantage of it, but we do accept outside scholarships. So if you have a part-time job, ask your job, do they offer scholarships? You go to church, ask your pastor, if they offer scholarships, and just make sure to explore the different websites, especially the United Negro College Fund. 
student life organizations. So we have so many organizations on campus. Um, here are a few. Our SGA, a student government association, our marching band, the Golden Voice Choir, cheerleading, state clubs, Greek life. So something interesting about our state clubs. So Tuskegee University, although it's in Alabama, um, the bulk of our students are not just from Alabama. It's like one big melting pot. We have students from all over the United States. So because of that, at the university, each state has its own club. So it's really nice to be able to come from home and have someone that, you know, you can just talk and relate to that's from the same state that you're from. All right, so that's going to end my presentation. So if you have any questions, would like to know um, a little bit more about anything else, please feel free to reach out to us. Okay, great and fantastic. You gave us um, some information that we needed. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to follow up with a few more questions or whatever to give us a little bit more detail about parents and um, students a little more detail. Mm -hmm. um, with everything going on today, we know that typically there's registration deadlines and application deadlines for scholarship and acceptance and everything like that. Some colleges are suspending that. Some colleges are having, are having rolling admissions. What is Tuskegee doing regard, in that regard? So because of COVID-19, Tuskegee University did waive our ACT and SAT tests for our incoming freshmen. So as of right now, those are the provisions that were made as far as deadlines or um, with everything going on. As far as the class of 2021, we're just waiting to see what's going to happen. So we're going to continue to make adjustments just depending on where we are. Okay, then. All right, then. That's, that's good um, to take a look at that. Um, I know the admissions rate, you know, the, the GPA that's required to be able to get into school. What would happen if a student was like right there, that GPA, or just a little bit below there? Is there some type of conditional um, admission or something that they could look forward to that would help them like transition into there, or is that a hard, fast rule? Yeah, so we definitely have, um, <laughs> we will accept a student conditionally. Um, the lowest that we'll go with our conditional accepting is a 2.3 GPA. With our ACT, it's going to be a 17 on an ACT, and with our um, SAT is going to be a 790. And with saying that, I think it's very important to mention that we super score our SAT. So make sure you're taking that test as many times as possible, if possible, what's going on, but take it as many times as possible so that you can receive the best scholarship. Okay. So um, with them taking it as many times as possible, if they submit an application and they have an initial score, they can keep updating the application as more the more they take it. And yeah, if they so get we will accept score, you. Yes, I'm sorry. We will accept you with your requirements. Um, as long as you continue to take the test and send it to us, we'll update your file. So if you qualify for another award, then we'll um, give you the high the award that you qualify for. So don't worry about um, feeling like if you're applying too early or anything that, that, that won't hurt you at all from receiving the scholarship that you deserve by the end of the year. Okay, then. All right. Um, so looking at that, one of the things that we do know is that every student who applies to college doesn't necessarily get accepted to college. So can you tell me what your admissions rate is at um, Tuskegee? Yeah, so we accept about 60% of our students. So a lot of our students, if you don't qualify um, to be accepted that first year, we'll still welcome you back that next year. So if you decide that you can't come, but you want to attend Tuskegee University, you want to graduate, but you don't meet the qualifications um, your freshman year, we definitely recommend transferring, um, attend maybe like your a local college near you just to save money and transfer because we do offer transfer scholarships as well. And the transfer scholarships are easier to achieve to me um, versus the freshman scholarships. Those scholarships are based off of GPA and um, transfer per credit hours. So if you transfer with a 3.5 GPA and have at least 20 transferable credit hours, um, we can offer you a full tuition scholarship plus 
$800 in books. So most of our students who want to come freshman year, but they're not accepted, they transfer within a year or two. Okay. All right. So taking a look at that, we talked about the um, admissions rate. We want students to get in school and we want them to stay in school. So what is your um, freshman retention rate? So our freshman retention rate is pretty good. Um, we're at about 70%. Of course, we want that higher. We, 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 our goal is, is 100%, of course. But uh, right now, that's pretty good. And we just try to make sure we um, keep in contact with our students. During midterms, if you have a feeling great, um, we're reaching out to you. We want you to make, you know, make it happen before the end of the year. At the end of the semester, if you have a feeling great, we're recommending you the tutoring. And, you know, we're just trying to stay on you because we want to see our students again. Most of the times our students don't come back. Um, it may be because of financial aid, maybe because of like, failing classes. So we're just trying to, we're trying something new now just to make sure that we keep a hold of those students and don't lose them. Because most of our students who come their freshman year, and let's say they don't do good because of grades. And I think it's important for students to know that the students are capable of doing what they have to do. It's just being able, if you're in a new environment and sometimes it's just hard to stay focused. Right. So that's something we just try to like do study halls. We try to reiterate to our students that, you know, have fun, but stay focused, do different study groups. Um, we want to make it where our freshmen all interact with one another and, and be able to help one another. And um, I know all schools have freshman orientation. Those classes I love because you're able to network with other like-minded individuals like yourself and you all can keep each other on track. So when coming to school, try to have like an accountability partner that, that you all can just keep each other on track and you can still enjoy yourself. Okay. Yeah, that, that, <clears throat> that's great. Now, with, with, to get away from the statistics or just to finish with the statistics, okay, we got the students in, we got them through freshman year, whatever. What is the graduation retention? What is the graduation rate, rate at Tuskegee? So graduation rate, it's so funny talking about graduation rate, <laughs> but um, it's about 50. The last time I checked, I believe it was about 58%. And I, I, I kind of, when it comes to, to the actual race and statistics, like I hate to really quote them, you to get the quote from me. So just don't hold that, don't hold me to that rate right okay. there because that's the last time I checked. Okay, all right. <laughs> And that's fine. We just wanted to get a ballpark figure so that, you know, parents and students will know, you know, about getting in and staying in and being able to take a look at that. Okay, so then let me take, you know, go back to something I'm sure you probably are familiar with. Once the students are in, it is statistically known that a student who works or, or who is involved throughout their, you know, throughout their academic studies before they graduate tend to do better. Um, Tuskegee, does Tuskegee have internship programs? And if so, could you tell me like about some of the companies that are involved in internship programs? Okay, so yeah, we definitely have internships. Um, I actually want to mention that for our business and engineering students, we have this big tube conference that happens every year. And of course, we have opportunities for our other students, but this is um, just something big that we do every year. Um, it's only for Tuskegee University students, and we invite um, about 300, 400, 500 companies to come down, so like four, and there's just so many companies that come down, and our students are allowed at that moment to interview, give them your resume, your transcript. If you're not a senior, you're still allowed to go and try to secure your co-ops and your internships at this event. So most, with, most of our majors internships are mandatory. We want our students to use your hands, to, to be as hands-on as possible while you're in school before you graduate. Okay, all right, perfect. So then let's talk about graduation, okay? So we've gone through the program, we've gone through the internships, and we are in graduation. Can you tell me what type of companies or whatever actually hire um, Tuskegee graduates? Yeah, so um, NASA is a lot is a company that a lot of our students um, go and work for. Um, GMC a company, a lot of our students go and work for. Um, you know, we have we graduate a lot of um, um, animal science and vet med students, so a lot of them go work for um, different clinics. A lot of our students um, go back to. We have a lot a big student body from California, so a lot of them go back. Um, home and work, you know, for different companies at home. So it's so many different companies. And then a 
the list of um, most of our companies per college is listed on our website, broken down by each individual college. So I'll make sure that um, I share that information with you all so that you can get a better idea, um, just depending on what your major is, um, some of the companies that we, well, some of the companies that our students intern and go work for. Okay. So now that, that we have the students on campus, tell me a little bit about residence life. What does residence life look like for first year students? Are, are they in a dorm? Is it like two to a room, four to a room? Is it a commune? Is, you know, sweet, what, what, what does residence life look like for new incoming freshmen? Okay, so our incoming freshmen, you have to stay, you're required to stay on campus your first year. We want y'all on campus, we want y'all very close to us. <laughs> um, you can drive your first year. Um, something important to mention is each dorm room, each freshman dorm room on campus has its own step team. And that's just something to make sure our students are engaging with one another. That's very important to us. We know we have some of the best professors. We graduate some of the best students, but we want our students to network when they come on campus. Right. We want you all to engage. We want, when you to walk in a room, someone should know like, they must have graduated from Tuskegee University. So that's really our goal. So that's some things that we do for our freshmen. Of course, um, the first couple of days that you're on campus, you have your NSO week, that's new student orientation week, where you are doing different games, scavenger hunts, just so that you can get to know the campus because it's kind of intimidating your first day of class. You're on this big campus and go to, you got 10 minutes to get to English class and you don't know what building you're supposed to go to. <laughs> so we try to make sure our students are kind of acclimated to the campus. I know it's so hard to get completely acclimated, but as much as possible before um, you start your first year. Um, after that, our students are, we have like different programs. Um, for our freshman students to attend, just for the freshman students to attend. Of course, most of them are not mandatory, but most of our students attend them. Um, and that's just another way to make sure our freshmen are engaging on campus. It's plenty of other organizations that you all are able to join. Uh, we just started a new student recruiter program on campus. So it's similar to being an ambassador on campus. And that's just another way for our students to um, interact with one another, if they love the university, they're able to sell the university. And on top of that, receive type, some type of scholarship funding. We create a lot of scholarship funding for our students, especially once they're on campus. Okay. So I hope I answer your question. Sometimes I tend to go, you know. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you would no, we're doing, we're doing good. We're getting exactly okay. where, where, where I need to be. Um, <clears throat> so a couple, just a couple more questions. <clears throat> for um, for my family, um, ROTC was important. My daughter was involved in ROTC and obviously had to had you know a long career in the military before she retired. Um, so I'm a huge proponent of the ROTC program. Does Tuskegee offer ROTC program? Yes, and we actually have every branch of the military on campus. So you all will be able to take advantage of our ROTC program. Um, that's another way for you all to receive scholarship funding as well if you're just looking for um, different scholarship opportunities. I love our ROTC program. I actually had a sister to just, um, well, she didn't just graduate, but she's a captain now um, in the military and she went through Tuskegee University's ROTC program. Got it. Okay, that's good. Um, we talked about your. Um, <clears throat> Your students, um, you have students from several different international countries. Does that mean that you have a study abroad program? And if you do, where, are, where do some of the students attend to that study abroad? So we have, we have several countries. Most of our countries are um, in Africa where our students like to attend. And that's also included on our website. We're actually um, still expanding that program, but each um, department is a part, each college is a part of the study abroad program. And we actually encourage all of our students to at least study abroad, consider doing it for a semester. So once you're a student on campus, that's something that um, your advisors are going to start throwing at you. So don't fret. When you come on campus, they want you to um, participate in our study abroad programs. All right, then. Um, I think that that is it. Um, you talked about where the um, campus was located. Um, so for a student who may be coming from an urban area to is this like more rural or 
if it's rural, so a student that uh, was more urban, if a student's coming, where, where does, where did, where do they fit in at that, at that juncture? Yeah, so it's definitely a rural area. Um, Tuskegee, we are in the country, but that's what makes the university so fun. So we're not that far from um, our bigger cities. Like I said, Auburn, um, like Walmart and Auburn is about 15 minutes away and the mall is about 20 minutes away. We don't have one in Tuskegee, Alabama, but it's like the same distance um, if you were in a big city to travel to those um, different locations. So Tuskegee is country. We have a lot of farmland, <laughs> a lot of forestry. That's why our agriculture program is amazing on campus. But that's why, like I said, that's why the campuses are so fun. You don't have to worry about the students trying to um, go off campus to find out what they want to do for fun. They make their fun on campus. We have plenty of activities on campus. Um, we even have like a Logan Hall on campus where some certain um, organizations wanted to throw like parties for our students. We let them do that there because our security guards are able to be there and we're able to watch the students. So that's a good thing about being like in a smaller town. It's very close knit and everything is pretty much done in the same area where we all can look out for each other. Okay, fine. Um, speaking of students traveling, are freshman students allowed to have a car during their first year on campus? Yes, they can have a car on campus their first year. All right then, that's it. Um, I know with, um, with everything that's going on, there are some universities that are doing you know, on, on site classes, there's some that are doing online, there are some that are doing a hybrid. Can you tell me where you are, where you all are right now, or is it still under construction as to how you're doing it? Or are, are classes gonna be like full-time on site in the fall? Do we, do you know yet? Yes, so we're actually, <laughs> we're doing everything. So we're actually giving our students the option. We're not allowing as many students to move on campus. Of course, our freshmen and our sophomores are gonna be on campus. But um, everyone else, they're going to live um, off campus and surrounding areas. And you have the option to choose whether you want to do all virtual classes, all online classes, if you want to do hybrid classes. And of course, that's a mixture of both online and in-person classes, or if you want to do all in-person classes. So we are doing a mixture of all. Our class sizes will be smaller, of course. So for all our in-person classes, you won't have as many people in the class with you as you're used to having in the class with you. We're trying to make sure we social and just physically distance ourselves from one another. So we still want to follow guidelines for making sure our students, students still receive the experience that they want this okay. semester. All right, all right, perfect. Okay, Raven, I think that that lists all the questions that I have for you, trying to think of anything else I can have. Okay, any final thoughts, any last things that you want to say to your students and parents and then probably give them your contact information again? Yeah, sure. So again, my name is Raven Lee. Um, you can email me if you have any additional questions at rlee, that's R-L-E-E, -E, at tuskegee.edu. My phone number is 334-727-8718. And I just want to close with, I just hope that everyone is continuing to just remain vigilant and safe during these, you know, just trying times right now. I understand that we all um, have to adjust to a new way of living. But if you have any questions for Tuskegee University, we are still here. We're still working and we still want to provide you with the best service. So please feel free to reach out to us with any questions that you have. All right, Raven, thank you so much for being here with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.